Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this is a, a really big news cycle day, and I spent most of the day just reading the news, updating the blog. But uh, we're going to look at some of that in a bit. But I wanted to dig into the gold spot price, specifically in the different currencies and juxtaposing that to the various paper markets in those currencies because I want to try to prove a point here that we're not looking at a we're no longer looking at a currency um, war sort of thing the way the currency war works is that uh, various countries devalue their currency and the prices of goods go up internally, but their exports uh, get cheaper and uh, the currency war rolls around the planet. And that's what we've really seen for a good, maybe even 10 years now. Now we're starting to see a shift here with the gold price and the various paper currencies. Now, unfortunately, I don't have, I'm sorry, paper uh, stock markets. Uh, I don't have uh, crosses for things that I would really like, uh, like the gold price in the Chinese yuan or the gold price in the Venezuelan bolivar or the gold price in the Argentine peso because those are not charts you can get readily. But let's just go with the charts that we have here. We're going to start off with the Japanese yen. And what we're going to do is we're going to cross them with the paper markets uh, the metal markets versus the paper markets and we'll just do overlays here so we'll start with the Japanese yen gold and you saw how gold is rallying in the Japanese yen now you can see the bottom that formed with the financial crisis in 2008 and then the ramping of money in 2009 you can see that the bottom was put in in the gold spot price back in the fall of 2008 in, in yen. And the Nikkei, this is the Nikkei 225, that's the main average. We're going to look at the main averages for all these countries. You can see that in, then in March, the Nikkei put in its bottom. And then we had all these crazy things uh, that Kuroda and uh, Shinzo Abe and these crazy Keynesian politicians in Japan did and and everybody thought that well this might be uh, the Keynesians uh, big run at things well you can see now look at the dramatic uh, results that we have here with this thing reversing you can see the Nikkei is the paper market is going down dramatically and the physical market of gold is going up I expect these to reverse dramatically and uh, so let's look at the next currency here. Uh, we'll go ahead and pull the, and, and keep in mind that many of these gold prices in these currencies are going in, are near new highs. So here's gold in the Australian dollar. You can see that, here it is. Uh, we, we have that price from 2009. You can see the trend is very clear. The trend was briefly interrupted, we'll say. Uh, in uh, 2012, 2013, but you can see we're right back on, we're not on this pace, that was the pace, but we're about this pace, which is still a fairly steady pace. Now let's superimpose the paper index over the gold price, and this is the uh, Australia S&P ASX 200, that's the primary index in Australia, and you can see here, same sort of thing. You see that? The gold price is rocketing uh, skyward, just really trying to get into new highs. Uh, huge weekly move, and you can see that the Australian stocks are dropping dramatically. Same pattern. Same pattern is forming all over the world. Uh, let's look at the Canadian spot price for gold. Very, very strong. Uh, with the weekly move that we see there, the only real rivals we have to this is something back in here 
or maybe this rally here. But if we pull up the indices and look at the paper markets in Canada, that's going to be the, the Toronto Stock Exchange, the uh, TSX Composite Index. And when we do an overlay, uh, there you go. Uh, stocks are faltering. They all bottomed. You can see that same pattern. Gold bottom in the currency back in the fall of the financial crisis and then paper bottom when they printed up all the paper. Uh, same pattern happening through all these countries. Let's go and look at the... We're going to skip the Swiss franc because that is exactly um, the same as the euro since they pegged it and we'll just go ahead and pull the euro gold spot price and you can see not quite as strong but with the things that are going on in Europe uh, absolute insanity and uh, one thing that you can see here that's kind of a real clear formation here is this continuation uptrend here with this uh, rising a strongly rising pennant here you can see how uh, the rising pennant broke out in a violent manner and it didn't correct until of course the central bank smacked down the price. Now, right here, we're correcting back in to this area where the original breakout occurred. And you can see there was one violent attempt that failed. Now we're trying again. So let's cross that over with the paper stock prices. And that's actually going to be, I don't know if we can get the Euro topics here. Uh, we'll use Euro next. Uh, I'm sorry, it's not topics. It's uh, it's Euro next, and we'll just use the Euro next and do an overlay with that. And you can see uh, they have not crossed, but they are in the process of crossing as the European stocks start to roll down and the price of gold in the Euro rises. So our next currency is going to be the uh, Great British Pound, and this is interesting. I haven't pulled this one yet, so I'm very curious to, uh, to see wh what this is. And uh, you can see there, it's uh, quite, a, again, quite a bit off the highs. Uh, we're looking at 1,200 on the highs, really, and we're still only at about 850. So this one really is the strongest, um, or the, uh, the weakest gold market uh, compared to the currency and uh, I don't know what the FTSE is doing, so we'll go ahead and pull up the uh, the British FTSE, and that's the FTSE 100. That's the main index in Britain, and you can see here that, uh, and that makes sense. This is one that hasn't crossed, but you can see that it's it's crossing. Now the only other one that is not even close and this fits exactly in with the paradigm that we've been talking about is US dollar gold. So if we look at gold spot in US dollars and we pull up the Dow Industrials the Dow 30 or as Andy Hoffman says the Dow propaganda average, the CIA propped up average. Look at that, the last man standing. This is the one I pointed out for the longest time. These are going to cross. Not only are they going to cross, they're going to cross violently and they're going to go the opposite direction. Uh, something like we had here. So you can see the pattern is, is starting. It's not a currency war. It's not something that is rolling from country to country, but it's actually something that's happening in all countries at the same time. Fascinating stuff. So let's go over to the cryptocurrencies now. I've had a lot of requests to cover the cryptocurrencies. I just don't have the time to do it. Uh, as I point out on the member site in the comments that we started covering Bitcoin in July of 2011. I have the video of the Bitcoin crash on Mt. Gox. I have a lot of videos on Bitcoin. I stopped making those once I decided that Bitcoin could take care of itself. 
because my purpose for covering Bitcoin was to make sure that Bitcoin uh, had coverage and uh, in my opinion was something that was going to be successful. I wanted to help it along. Of course, obviously it makes sense that if it's going to be successful, uh, anything that I do isn't going to have a real impact. Well, I was right. It turned out to uh, be a big success and uh, it's still growing. You can see that the Bitcoin market cap is growing. Now that's not really the big story. I have Bitcoin and Litecoin, Litecoin's falling. But the big thing you wanna watch here with Bitcoin is this number right here. Uh, this is the crypto market cap, the total market cap of all cryptocurrencies added together. That's Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, and you can see some of these coins coming in here. Uh, Ethereum has gone up 500% in the last month. Uh, Ripple has had a big rally. Now, if you remember, I shorted a lot of these. Uh, I took my shorts off quite some time ago when I saw technical breakouts to the upside and just admitted I was wrong. I was short of Doge, and uh, you can see new coins coming here, Storage. This is a fascinating coin uh, that uh, has shared storage. Uh, it's just all of this is too much for me to cover. Um, so if you're interested in it, uh, go to the Daily Decrypt. And um, there are a lot of links we posted today on the member site where you can follow this up. But this is the big number you want to watch. This is the amount of dollars that are flowing into cryptocurrencies. And this number is going to expand by a very large magnitude and a large number of coins are going to participate in this. So I don't have any more time to talk about that. Uh, it's one of those things that it's on its own and uh, I, I'm just glad to see it succeed. Uh, if you want to pursue it further, you're going to have to do it on your own. At some point, maybe when I no longer work for a living and when I no longer uh, have so much time dedicated to other things, I may be able to go back and do some analysis on the cryptocurrency space. But at this time, I just don't have the time. Now, look, let's look at the news cycle today. This is a huge news cycle that came in today. Uh, we have the story, a, a really big story. Most people don't consider it a really big story. For me, this is a really big story because we have the death of Ant. Antonin Scalia. Now this guy is uh, supposedly the uh, follower of William Rehnquist, who was really the only true conservative on the court. Although, uh, as many of you know, I went to law school and studied constitutional law. That was what I intended to be until I saw that uh, the system was completely corrupted and there was no hope of any uh, honesty in the system at all and dropped out. But uh, I, I intended to be a, a constitutional lawyer and uh, this, this person, Anton Scalia, actually was somebody who at least mouthed the belief that we should have some type of strict constructionism, which means that we should actually, <clears throat> excuse me, adhere to what the uh, framers intended. And if we don't agree with what the framers intended, then we should just simply uh, amend the Constitution as the process was provided. Well, uh, these people are dinosaurs, and one of the last dinosaurs died today. Now, it's interesting, this quote that I put on the blog from Scalia here, and this is something that I had pointed out. I didn't even know that Scalia had, had pointed this out. Uh, but this is a quote, uh, and this is the gay decision which is a ridiculous travesty uh, that someone could create a classification of chosen criminal behavior and make that a civil right. But this is what Scalia said about it. The court's naked judicial claim to legislative, indeed super legislative power, bulldozed the right of the people to self-government and said Scalia, who then turned to the peculiarly unrepresentative composition of the Supreme Court itself. Scalia noted that, quote, the federal judiciary is hardly a cross-section of America. Take, for example, this court, he said, which consists of only nine men and women, all of them successful lawyers who studied at Harvard or Yale Law School. Four of the nine are natives of New York City. Eight of them grew up in East 
West Coast states. Only one hails from the vast expanse in between. Scalia then observed that not a single evangelical Christian, a group that comprises about one quarter of the American population, or even a Protestant, which may be as high as 50% of the population. Think about that, people. I pointed this out before. A group, Protestant Christians, who represent 50% of the population is to be found on the court, which currently consists of six Catholics and three Jews. Think about that. And I don't know how many lesbians. That is an amazing fact. That man is gone. And he very likely could be replaced by another far-left, Marxist, uh, lesbian, communist, uh, socialist, uh, Catholic or Jewish, Obama appointee. Huge news day. Uh, another story here, just a huge news day. Um, this story uh, about Hillary Clinton, and I'm going to come back to this one. Uh, I love this uh, this image. The problem isn't so much that Hillary, Hillary is a corrupt, lying criminal. Everyone knows this. The problem is that her supporters don't care and uh, there's the story I'm going to play uh, at the end here from Ted Cruz. But here's the story out of Venezuela. This is absolute insanity. This man, you've heard all the updates I've done on this man. This man is an absolute lunatic, this uh, Nicolas Maduro. Now the people are starving they're starving in, in Venezuela, and we actually have people defending him, saying that the U.S. caused this because of the bankers. Well, I can tell you this. The bankers didn't cause uh, the grocers and farmers to go out of business. It was Nicolas Maduro who put price controls on so that grocers and farmers actually had to sell their product at a loss and went out of business and fled to Colombia. This is a madman. Uh, this man is on the level, eventually I think we'll see, this man is on the level of Mao Zedong and Stalin of Russia. This man will probably end up causing the deaths of potentially millions of people. This man is a very, very dangerous psychopath. Uh, now, one more story. Uh, this is a story about a machete-wielding Muslim who came into an Israeli Christian Arabic business in Columbus, Ohio. And you can see the caption I put there, Governor John Kasich of Ohio, who is uh, trying to get the GOP nomination. Now, this is somebody who said, he just said in an in interview just a few days ago, that he is a Democrat. This is a Republican who said in an interview that he is a Democrat. And... Uh, Kasich has supported the resettlement of Muslim refugees in his state. And in his state, we had uh, a Muslim walk into a restaurant with a machete and a knife and uh, critically injure four people. Fortunately, no one died. The, the, the Muslim terrorist was shot by the police. But that's the kind of insanity that we have. Now, let's watch this video. This is from Ted Cruz. And so this is a home run as far as social media is concerned. Maybe we will end up with a Trump Cruz ticket. Uh, but this is a home run. If you haven't seen the movie Office Space, I work in an IT environment where if you haven't seen the movie Office Space, then uh, you're not allowed on the team. But Office Space is a classic in the IT industry. Uh, so many cliches about the business are there. But this is a takeoff from when in office space, they had a printer that never worked. And if any of you are in IT or have had to deal with the IT help desk, there are printers that don't print all the time. It is a cliche. And of course, the, the uh, uh, song was, uh, it, it's great to be a gangster. And they took the printer and they went out into a field and they beat it to death with baseball bats. And that was the most satisfying moment in the world. So Ted Cruz has taken that video 
or that segment in the movie Office Space and made it into a viral video, which I think is going to be really big. It's already half a million. And it's Hillary destroying the computer that has all the secrets that show that she is a uh, a federal felon. So let's watch this video. Damn, it feels good to be a Clinton. Damn, it feels good to be a Clinton. A shameless politician always plays her cards right. Got a crew for the fight on the airwaves. Lap dogs in the press keep the mouths tight. Cause a Clinton never needs to explain what. Why it is what they done or with who. A real Clinton knows that they're entitled. And you don't get to know what they do. What, what, what difference does it make? For Clinton, what's loaded in some fat apple file? A Clinton plays the victim for promotion. A Clinton kills it off with a smile. Damn, it feels good to be a Clinton. A server full of secrets ain't no thing. Damn, it feels good to be a Clinton. Nothing ever hits with the sting. Ted Cruz, absolutely brilliant. At least Ted Cruz is smart enough to understand that he needs to be part of the social media to succeed. So back to the main story. Uh, We have all of the currencies are correcting in terms of gold, but as well we have all of the paper markets in all of those currencies correcting in terms of gold. Of course, we know that silver is going to follow and it's going to be a gigantic reversal. And we'll talk to you next time.